Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with our practice questions, a quick gentle reminder. As part of our knowledge series, the next few days will be some important topics. What you have to do is tune into our YouTube channel every day at 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. Some of the topics that will be discussed include Earth's interior, causes of French Revolution, presidential election in India and USA, Continental Shelf, Secularism, Indus Valley Civilization, Uniform Civil Code, Collapse of Soviet Union, 1975 Emergency, India-Russia Relations, Reservation in India, Gaganyan Mission, 1971 India-Pak War, Liberation of Bangladesh and India-Japan Relations. All these topics are important from the static part of the syllabus and can be very important for both mains as well as prelims. So please do tune in every day at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Let's get started and look into the first question. Which of the following statements about red panda is are correct? The red panda has been listed as endangered on the IUCN red list. It is the state animal of Sikkim. Red panda is a Schedule 1 animal according to Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Which of the statements about red panda are correct? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Let's look into the second question. Consider the following pairs. We have the national park or the zoological park on one side and the state it is present on the other side. Singalila National Park, West Bengal, Padmaja Naidu Park, Andhra Pradesh, Niora Valley National Park, Uttarakhand. The answer to this is one only. Why have we taken both these practice questions? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to red pandas as well as different national parks. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first question, which of the following statements about red panda is correct? Yes, red panda has been listed as endangered. So the first statement is right. It is the state animal of Sikkim. Second statement is also right. And the third statement is also right because red panda is a schedule one animal and it is accorded the highest protection under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Where are the red pandas found? They are found in India, Nepal, China, Tibet, Bhutan as well as Burma which is nothing but Myanmar. So all these countries are where we have the red panda and in India they are found in Sikkim and Assam, Arunachal Pradesh and the temperate forest of the Himalayas. What are the characteristics of red panda? The red panda is easily recognized by its characteristics, reddish brown fur on the upper part and the blackish fur on the lower part. Its skull is roundish with medium sized upper ears, its nose is black, its eyes are blackish, its teeth are robust, its long bushy tail with six alternative transverse ocular rings provide balance and excellent camouflage in the habitat with moss and lichen covered trees. The legs are black and short with thick fur on the soles of the paw. So remember, they usually prefer the deciduous and the coniferous forest. They are usually found on the trees as well and red panda happens to be a solitary animal except during the mating season. What are the threat to these pandas? Red pandas are often killed when they are caught in the traps that are meant for some other animals. Let's say for example the wild pigs or the deer. So they would have been laid for some other animals but this red panda gets locked up in these nets and unfortunately it loses its lives as well. They are also poached for their distinctive pelts in China and Myanmar. Red panda fur caps or hats have also been found for sale in Bhutan as well. These are the major threats to these animals. Now if you look into the second question, it speaks about the national park. The Singlila National Park, the Padmaja Naidu Zoological National Park, Neuro Valley National Park are all found in West Bengal and it is not in Andhra Pradesh and Uttarakhand, which is why the answer to this would be one only. Now let's look into the next practice question. With reference to Sanati, which of the following statements is are correct? It is located on the banks of Bhima River in Kalburgi district of Karnataka. The only available sculpture of Emperor Ashoka in a limestone relief along with his concert was found here. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is both. 
why have we taken this practice question because this article on the hindu makes a reference to sannati so remember sannati is associated with buddhism it is a buddhist site and also remember another important site which is very close to sannati and that happens to be kannagana halli so kannagana halli which forms the part of sannati site is in kalburgi district in the state of karnataka when we speak about buddhism buddhism started spreading everywhere in india it also went abroad as well because of the influence of ashoka so as the spread of buddhism started it also resulted in the construction of memorials like stupas and viharas and the archaeological survey of india has excavated at kannahalli near sannati number of stupas along with good number of scriptures as well so the stupa at sannati was known as shakya maha chaitya This stupa may have been built during the Ashoka's reign but later it was renovated by the Satavahana kings there is another place in Karnataka called as Banavasi in Uttara Kannada district this also has rich cultural heritage that is associated with Buddhism so remember Sannati remember Kanagana Halli and also remember Banavasi in Uttara Kannada district all associated with Buddhist sites now let's look into the next practice question Which amongst the following is the best description of Operation Blue Star? The operation was launched by the Indian Army to recapture the Indian territories from Pakistani intruders in the Kargil Dras sector. It was a military operation to eliminate armed militants who were holed up in Golden Temple. It was an anti-insurgency operation launched by the Indian Peacekeeping Force against the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Nadu, an operation to seize control of the Siachen Glacier in Kashmir. Which amongst the following best describes about the operation blue star the answer to this is it was a military operation to eliminate armed militants who were holed up in the golden temple why have we taken this practice question because this article on the indian express makes a reference to the operation blue star so what is this operation blue star under the orders of the former indian prime minister indira gandhi ji the indian military stormed into the premises of the golden temple in amritsar to drive out extremist religious leader jernel singh brindanwale and his armed followers so this operation that was conducted by the indian army is what is called as operation blue star so the operation blue star was carried out by the indian army from 1st to 10th june 1984 in order to capture sikh leader jernel singh brindanwale and his group of sub supporters who had lodged at the golden temple in amritsar in punjab so to eliminate some of the extremists who were in the golden temple and also prevent the creation of the kalistani state what we had was this operation which was carried forward under the leadership of the army now let's look into the next practice question consider the following statements it is one of the successor states of yugoslavia it is a landlocked country it is not part of the european union the above statements best describe about which country is it bulgaria kosovo north macedonia or serbia the answer to this is north macedonia Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to North Macedonia. So remember, North Macedonia happens to be one of the countries which happens to be a landlocked country. As of now, it is not part of the European Union as well. And do remember, it is the successor state of Yugoslavia. Since all the three statements closely speak about North Macedonia, the answer is this. When we look into North Macedonia, it happens to be a landlocked country, and it is not part of European Union. Which of the countries are part of the European Union? We have Austria, Belgium, Bulgaria, Croatia, Republic of Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland. France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain and Sweden. These are the countries which are part of the European Union. And remember, North Macedonia is not part of the European Union. 
why is that north macedonia is not allowed to be part of the european union that is largely because of the differences with other countries one happens to be greece the other happens to be bulgaria why is greece opposing north macedonia from entering into the european union that is because according to greece they feel that this country is planning to usurp the greek history and culture similarly bulgaria also feels that this country of north macedonia is disrespecting the shared cultural and historical traits and as a result both these countries of bulgaria and greece are not happy with the membership of north macedonia into the european union so there are differences which ultimately has to be resolved and if resolved they may in all likelihood in the near future may become the member of the european union now let's look into the next practice question Consider the following pairs. We have the wetland or the lake on one side, and the location it is present on the other side. Hokera wetland, Punjab; Renuka wetland, Himachal Pradesh; Rudrasagar Lake, Tripura; Sastam Kota, Tamil Nadu. How many pairs given above are correctly matched? The answer to this is only two pairs. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2022. When we speak about Hokera wetland, this is in the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, and it is not in Punjab. So the first one is wrong. When we speak about Sastam Kota, it is not in Tamil Nadu, but instead it is in Kerala. So it is two and three which are right. So it is only two pairs which are correctly matched. So the answer to this would be B. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2022. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is cloudburst. What is this cloudburst? Cloudburst happens to be excessive rainfall that happens in a region for a very short period of time. So it refers to extreme amount of rainfall which happens for a very short period of time, and this can also be accompanied by hail, thunder, so on and so forth. So what is cloudburst? Excessive rain for a very short period of time in a particular area if you have to look into the definition of the india meteorological department it defines it as unexpected precipitation exceeding 100 mm or 10 cm per hour over a geographical region of approximately 20 to 30 square kilometer so significant amount of rainfall can also result in floods and this can create havoc in that particular region why are they difficult to predict that is because as of now we do not have much of the technology we do not have definitive data on the exact number of cloud bursts that occur in the country as well because we do not have the technological advancement and because we also do not know when it can happen as well and because it happens over a very small area it is difficult to predict accurately whether the cloud burst can happen in a specific area or not on one side we have dearth of technology on the other side because it occurs in a very small area we would not be able to understand and bring into notice whether cloud burst will happen in that particular area so what are the causes of the cloud burst everywhere a cloud burst usually occurs when clouds with very high humidity stop at one place so the water droplets present there are mixed together the density of cloud increases with the weight of the droplets now the question is why does it usually occur in the hilly areas and does it also occur in the plain areas the answer to this is cloud burst also occur at the plains as well however they usually prefer the mountainous regions that is because they are more prone to cloud burst due to the orography so remember a cloud burst usually occurs in high altitude areas due to the formation of a low pressure area on the top of a mountain the low pressure zone attracts all these clouds to the top of the mountain with greater force and when they hit the peak the moisture content is released in the form of the rain so in hilly areas sometimes saturated clouds ready to condense into rain cannot produce rain due to the upward movement of the very warm current of air instead of falling downwards rain drops are carried upwards by the air current new drops are formed and existing rain drops increase in size after a point the rain drops become too heavy for the cloud to hold on to and they drop down together in a quick flash which is why we have some of these cloud bursts which occur usually in the mountain region 
what can be the impact whenever a cloudburst occurs in a particular region it can trigger a flash floods as well these floods can also cause uprooting of the trees as well and as a result whenever they flow they also carry all the debris that is on their path and this means more destruction and as a result what we can also witness is loss of lives economic activity coming to a standstill and this can also cause landslides in the hilly areas this can lead to loss of economic activity and the loss of lives as well it is this that we have to understand with respect to the cloud bus so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best